Don't leave me hanging. It's go time. Hey everybody, this is Josh, and here we have a game between Maus Hasu, he's the blue Protoss up in the top right of Zelnaga Caverns, and his friend and teammate Maus Straylock is the red Terran down on the bottom left. So these guys are playing against each other for some kind of European tournament. I actually found this replay on a European replay site. They did not have the entire best of three or five or whatever it was, but this game in particular looked interesting, so I thought I'd share it with everybody and try to cast it. Uh, this is my first cast in about a week since casting all those QXE and TLO games. This one is a lot more recent than those were. Uh, this was played on December 5th, I want to say, but uh, yeah, the reason I haven't cast anything is because I've been moving all of my possessions from my old house to my new house. I'm still unpacking stuff, but now I have all my computer set up. My internet is running great. I actually have much faster internet here at the new place than the old place, and uh, at this house, I don't have any roommates, so I can cast games naked if I so choose. I'm not casting naked, but it, you're thinking about it now, aren't you? Anyway, uh, yeah, so internet's much faster. I'll be back on regular schedule, casting at least a game a day for you guys. I know it's so sad when one of your favorite YouTube channels doesn't cast anything for a while, but uh, I'll be back on track now. And also, I have kind of a weird side announcement that I'll be making later. Uh, not really dealing with StarCraft II, but you'll see. Some of you might like it anyway. And both players are doing their very standard racial builds here. Of course, Hasu with the Pylon Gateway Vespine, and Straylock with the Supply Depot Barracks Refinery over there. Uh, both players are starting to scout now, finally. Hasu Ob's moving across a little bit earlier than Straylock. Through the middle of the map, Straylock uh, going to be taking the left side, though, so they actually will not run into each other. Uh, Hasu Ob's might be trying to plant a pylon somewhere sneaky, but doesn't look like that's the case just yet. Up in the production tab, still don't see anything crazy. There goes the orbital command for Straylock right on time. After that barracks completes, he's pumping out a single marine, most likely to chase off this scout. You'll see this Terran build like 90% of the games between very good players, just because these openings are so strong and consistently good uh, against straight up play. So Hasu Abs is getting a second assimilator pretty quickly and a cybernetics core. <laughs> you steal my mineral, I kill your nexus, apparently. Hasu, yeah, he did manage to steal some minerals there, but this marine Wow, he patrolled right up next to him and still didn't see him. There he goes. He's just getting in position to better shoot at him for longer. And uh, Hasu actually could escape here. Nothing really to see here except the second gas. And since there's no refinery there, he did gain some information before getting shot down by those marines. And the SCV did jab that Nexus a little bit, but of course that shield is back up already. Cybernetics Core not quite done yet. Second gas is fully uh, saturated right now with the three probes. Straylock's second refinery does go up shortly after that uh, scouting probe was eliminated. Factory is being built here by the first barracks and supply depot at the front means that Straylock might be starting to wall off a little bit and go for a little bit of a tech build. He has not tried to expand just yet so he's not doing one racks expand. He still could go for the 111. I'm not sure if he's going to or not of course but second gas makes it seem like he probably will. A Twilight Council being hidden at the bottom of Hasu's base could mean DTs could be a, a potential strategy here very soon for him. Hasu Ab's chasing down this scouting SCV. I don't believe you saw that down there. No, he didn't. And um, that's kind of interesting because actually players will like to skirt the edges of these big bases on Zelnaga Caverns just because it is so large. And uh, this sentry pops out in perfect time to stop that SCV from getting down there. So Straylock has no idea that the Twilight Council is building. The second gateway is coming up now. He might be able to guess uh, something's a little fishy because the second gateway is a little slow but um, he's getting a starport at the normal time anyway so what he builds out of there is actually going to be the biggest indicator of what he thinks Hasu is going to be doing. If he gets a raven pretty quickly um, that could actually shut down Hasu Abs pretty quickly. Uh, he is getting it swapped onto that tech lab so he could build a banshee or a raven. We'll just have to see in a few seconds what he's going to build. He's got the money for either one. He is going to build a Banshee first, so I'm not sure he's thinking Twilight Council is uh, what Hasu is actually hiding there. And this first Hellion popped out of the factory a while ago, scooted across the map. Now he's up in Hasu's base. He is going to finally see the Twilight Council. And luckily for Straylock, he's already got that starport with the tech lab on it, so he can get a Raven out pretty quickly. This Dark Shrine is building. I'm not sure exactly where it is. There it is in the back there. He blocked it off with a couple of pylons to make sure that the Hellion wouldn't uh, be able to attack it quite so early. And this pylon's a pretty good placement here. It can't really be shot at from the low ground unless he's got vision way over here, and he can still warp in down there. So I like that spot. 
I'm not sure I've seen that spot before, but it's it's pretty good. Pretty crafty. And Bunker going down at Straylock's front. He does not want to deal with that. Is he getting an engineering bay? No, it doesn't look like it. So he is just going to be building a raven instead of uh, getting an engineering bay for some turrets. The banshee flies right over that warping in pylon. Oh, he's not going to have any detection uh, early enough here. I uh, might do a picture in picture with that banshee as it's flying around. I'm going to go ahead and follow the DTs here and see what they're able to accomplish here at the front with no detection in the area. Raven is only about halfway finished. No engineering bay even being built yet. And there goes the scan. Obviously, he can scan whenever he feels like it, as long as he's got the energy. So uh, all Hasuobs has to do is bounce in and out of there after that scan completes. But now the Raven is about to finish, so Strelak did a good job saving up that energy, making sure no DTs would screw him up uh, prematurely. With that Raven out, these DTs are going to be basically worthless. But uh, didn't have to do any picture-in-picture -picture here because the Banshee actually didn't do anything. Hasu saw it coming, obviously, as it flew over that pylon earlier and just positioned his air units there, or his anti-air units, rather, uh, to deal with this. Uh, there is no robotics facility finished yet. Now it just finished on the production tab, so there are no observers yet, no cannons. So now it's Hasu Obs with no detection um, being attacked by a cloaked unit, this flying DT as some players like to refer to it, the Banshee taking out two probes very quickly, and now he's basically got open season on these guys until that Observer finishes. And now the Observer is starting to finish. Strelak is going to get a couple of more probe kills here before it gets over there uh, to let these Stalkers take out the Banshee. Here we go. This Banshee most likely going to be killed. Can he get another probe kill? Doesn't look like it. So Hasu gets that Observer out just in time, but he lost five probes. So let's look at the income tab and see just what uh, difference that makes. Straylock actually up to 34 harvesters here. Oh, this DT actually got a... No, he didn't get any kills. He just um, forced Straylock to pull mining off of that natural for just a second. Does get one Hellion kill right before he's gunned down by those Marines and Raven combination there. Uh, Straylock able to expand pretty easily here. Still does not have an engineering bay anywhere that I can see, so it looks like he's not going to be building turrets even though he knows Hasu Abs has that uh, Dark Templar technology. Now we do see the engineering bay, of course, as I talk about it. That's a sign of a good player to uh, build something as I talk about it because <laughs> it means they know what they're forgetting as well. And Hasu looks like he's switching gears. He's kind of forced to uh, just because... He's already got the robotics facility built for the Observer, so he might as well switch into a robotics bay. He's seen not really a lot of uh, offensive units from Straylock except for these Marines, so Colossus, of course, is a decent choice. And he can always mix in a DT or two for harassment on the side. This one's already here chilling. Uh, probe watching the Zelnaga Tower, always nice to see. Both players have their expansions going pretty well here, and Hasu actually has pulled ahead in the Harvester count since losing those five probes initially to that Banshee. He's um, just been cranking out probes out of both of these with chrono boosts. He's up working off of six gas here, and Straylock is just a little bit behind on that uh, count. He's got his two refineries at his natural building now, but soon he'll be able to saturate that as well and uh, keep up on the tech. If we look at the production tab, we see lots of upgrades rolling here for Straylock. He's got combat shields, concussive shells, siege tech, plus one weaponry, and almost nothing for Hasu Abs. He does not have a forge, no upgrades for these ground units yet. There is a Colossus out now. Uh, he does not have extended thermal lance yet. So this force from Straylock actually could pre be pretty nasty. This Raven has a lot of energy for point defense drone. If he can get good positioning against this Colossus or try to burn it down, he does have stim already. Uh, he'll be in a great position to try and take out this Nexus. And we have another medevac here, a drop moving around the side. I'm watching the minimap to make sure that main army doesn't really do anything too crazy, but this drop should actually be pretty effective. There's only one stalker here to block against it, but Hasu is pretty quick there to respond. This medevac is probably going to go down. Uh, not be able to rescue any of these. The Colossus uh, bugged out a little bit there up against the side of this robotics facility and actually could have got a couple of more laser shots off but didn't. This medevac only has seven health left. One more stalker shot would be able to kill it off. Unfortunately for him, uh, not going to happen. What did he just attack there? I'm not sure. But um, this medevac still lurking here with three hurt units inside. He might as well use it, although this stalker guarding means that he will not be able to do anything. Uh, the main army of Straylock just retreated back to the natural and didn't actually uh, continue on into the natural expansion. I would have liked to see a two-prong attack there, but... Straylock is at 102 supply, and Hasuabs is keeping up quite well. These big uh, colossi right here taking up a lot of food count. 
He's at 100. Hasu is going to lose that pylon right there. I don't think... Oh, actually, it does actually put him behind in supply. 108 over 100. Not good for Hasu Abs. He's going to have to rebuild some pylons there. And there we see four pylons are being constructed right now. And the forge did complete. Extended thermal lances have been started. Uh, the forge could actually start upgrading right away. I'm not sure where it's at. Oh, here it is in the back of the mineral line here at the natural. Plus one weapons coming for all these ground units of Hasu. Strelok has got some Vikings cranking out now out of a reactor starport. That's going to help immensely against those Colossi. That's just the strength of the Terran army, man. Being able to flip uh, buildings onto these add-ons and just make exactly what you want that much quicker is going to allow Strelok to do a lot of damage to those Colossi and make Hasu abs, uh get a little bit behind in production capability. He's going to lose another pylon here, but he built so many of them, it does not drop him uh, below supply. It looks like Hasu was starting to move out there, but uh, has to respond to this drop. He's a little bit too slow to actually do anything, though, so this medevac is going to be able to fly back a little bit, heal up, and do another drop here in the future. Hasu trying to take out his destructible rocks to take over his high yield expansion. Strelok doing nothing of the sort. So if Hasu can actually secure a nexus here, it will put him up significantly in the resource game. Switch back to income real quick. Both players are pretty even. Mule's making a little bit of a difference there, but Hasu is up nine harvesters here. Uh, gas very even, of course, as both players have. There are four geysers saturated. Back to production, nothing really crazy going on. He is dropping the Nexus as expected and another assimilator pretty quickly. Uh, would like to see some more production structures here, maybe another robotics facility or even a Stargate out of Hasuabs just to be able to respond to everything that uh, Strelok is actually doing. Phoenix Colossi is a very, very potent combo. And